I am an advocate for Sanarani and today's episode is on cyber laws. In India, there has been a surge in the usage of digital platform ever since the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we have seen a surge in usage of uh, video conferencing apps such as Zoom, uh, Skype, Cisco, House Party and other apps. Uh, this surge is mainly on account of uh, various government restrictions and uh, precautionary measures being adopted uh, which have impacted businesses at large. Uh, a new trend of employment has started wherein employees are working from home. Uh, they are working remotely using the internet to transfer data, material, confidential information at times uh, through the internet and rather than postal services. Uh, since personal interaction has reduced and reliance on the digital platform has increased, uh, so has the adoption of uh, the digital media for e-commerce increased. Uh, since footfalls have dropped uh, as uh, many clients are no longer seeing uh, walk-ins uh, into their stores. So they have abandoned the real estate and have chosen to adopt website and e-commerce. Uh, this has increased in the usage of Google Pay, uh, Paytm, uh, Beam and other payment apps. Uh, in addition to all of this, since crime is also increasing, uh, courts have begun to accept e-filings and conduct court proceedings in video conferencing apps. Uh, and overall, the entire country has taken a new step towards adopting digital platform. Uh, with all of this, something that's uh, important to understand, to get perspective, uh, is the recent report of BBC, uh, wherein a, the, B, the BBC has reported that approximately 300 million daily participations are taking place in Zoom app, uh, which is a video conferencing app. Uh, beyond this, what we need to consider is that our crime rates in India have also been in increasing, especially cyber crimes. Uh, in 2019 alone, there has been a rise in 63.5% of uh, crimes, uh, out of which 60% of these crimes are attributed to fraud, online fraud. And if we had to put a monetary value on that, it would be 1.25 lakh crore rupees. That's a big amount. And the question comes, uh, what are we doing? How do we resolve these problems? Many individuals uh, get looted for, say, smaller amounts, 10,000, 5,000, and some people get duped for a large amount, say, a few lakhs. Uh, how do people go about resolving these disputes? Well, uh, that's what I'm going to be addressing today in this video. So, cyber crimes in India is generally governed under two enactments in India. Uh, these two enactments being the Indian Penal Code 1860 and the Information Technology Act 2000. Uh, the Indian Penal Code 1860 is a very uh, old statute which has uh, accounted for a large number of offenses. However, initially, they, it did not envisage uh, the possibility of electronic crimes. And as such, it had not captured uh, uh, electronic records this has been changed as with the introduction of the Information Technology Act of 2000. The Information Technology Act 2000 was enacted on the 17th day of October 2020. Uh, this enactment uh, has broadly explained uh, the crimes which is found in section 43 and section 44 of the enactment along with section 16 uh, and these crimes have been prescribed punishments, which is also covered under the same legislation. Uh, every citizen must be aware of these sections, must be aware of the contents of these sections, must be aware of the penalty. And every citizen must know how to claim his rights and remedies. So uh, as per the act, in case of a cybercrime being committed, an individual must approach the adjudicating officer and make an application on plain paper. Uh, along with the applicable fees. 
the adjudicating officer has been uh, created is an entity created under the statute under section 46 of the act and uh, this adjudicating officer is responsible for adjudicating any dispute uh, any crime which where the compensation and the penalty does not exceed 5 crores so what in case it increases 5 crores then in that case the competent courts have been empowered this is captured under section 43 read with section under section 46 read with section 61 of the enactment uh, moving forward uh, once an order of the adjudicating officers passed if it is passed by the consent of the parties that is if both parties uh, accept the order as it is passed uh, then in that case it cannot be appealed that is final uh, however in case the parties do not give consent then this order may be appealed before the appeal tribunal which is also formed under the act under section 48 of the act uh, there is a time frame within which one can approach this appeal tribunal and that time frame is 45 days from the date of the order of the uh, adjudicating officer uh, once before the appellate tribunal the appellate tribunal has a period of six months to decide this case uh, and the appeal and in that six months uh, the appellate tribunal can either accept and uh, confirm the order of the adjudicating officer or reprimand it back to the uh, adjudicating officer for fresh adjudication moving forward uh, in case anyone is concerned with this uh, order of the appellate tribunal, uh, the same has to be uh, appealed before the Honorable High Court of that state. Uh, the time frame to uh, approach the Honorable High Court is 60 days from the date of the order of the appellate tribunal. Alright, so keeping that in mind, we move on to certain other aspects which we must understand. Cyber crimes as such is not defined under any statute and the only crimes that have been mentioned are covered under section 43 and 44 and section 60 I believe of the enactment. Uh, these crimes uh, broadly will be discussed in another episode. Uh, in case you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to share and uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please do remember that this video is made on a generalized topic in the interest of the public. Every individual case has unique circumstances based on which uh, legal advice must be sought. Uh, professional legal advice must be taken from case to case basis. Nothing in this video should be construed as an opinion or creating any attorney-client privilege. Thank you and that will be all.